Happy Sunday, everybody. Talking about squatters and should they or should they not have rights? Because there's been an ever growing problem. Oh man, I forgot my hat, Eddie. So um, th there's been an issue and it's not just a California issue because it's been going on for quite some time uh, with squatters and going into vacant homes. And this has gotten to be an issue all over the country, especially in the Sunbelt area and most concentrated, the number one state to have squatters that have invaded the city is Atlanta, Georgia, which I was shocked to, to find out about, but they've had an influx of squatters uh, coming in. So I thought the best thing to do was to consult with a real estate agent in Atlanta. And you guys might know him from the chat. He's always here every single week. We have Clark the Realtor. <laughs> yes! How you guys doing today? How you doing? How you doing, Christina? Thank you for having me. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, everybody, for having me on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, of chat course. Today. So uh, just uh, for FYI, Clark uh, reached out to me and said, hey, you know, do you think it'd be possible that we talk about this for the following Sunday? But following Sunday is Easter Sunday. And I think everybody <laughs> should spend time with their family having some Easter eggs and all that stuff. So there's going to be no live stream next week. So the best thing to do, because this was an important topic, is to talk about squatter rights and what rights do they have this week because I have a tinfoil hat theory that I want to share with everybody and I want to get the audience's opinion. So before we get into any articles, I want to show you a news clips, some news clips that came out and we're going to discuss each little section because I've already, I have Eddie <laughs> breaking it up for us and you and I can talk about it, Clark. Yep. Okay. Just dealt with a squatter. Took three months to get rid of them. See, see, this is awful. This is awful. Eddie's going to pull up the, the video. Clark in the house. How you doing, Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, Eddie was uh, going to go ahead and pull that video up for okay. us. It, it's going to take a second here. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So this is from Channel 2 News. Um, it's talking about, so uh, just to, for, to give you guys a little heads up, because I'm not going to play the entire video. There is an Instagram page that is creating um these false uh advertisement basically for homes that they already know they've already gotten a list that are vacant whether they were for they were in foreclosure before or that people just moved out for a brief period of time because they're away uh on service because that's happened to a lady in atlanta and uh this is this is the next part of it so just know this is what's happening okay go ahead eddie Hit the Just button. another real estate pro hustling to rent homes on social media. So you will get a guaranteed six months rent free. But at one time payment homes, the site makes it clear. These are squatter homes and spells out just what that means in a penned Insta story. The company owners will come out, so will the police. The police will tell you it's a civil matter. It's nothing they can do about it. Squatter's rights. This is a criminal act. Okay, go ahead and pause it, Eddie. So what they're saying is... <laughs> They, they know what they're doing. They know that what they're doing is illegal. And what they have, the guy, the people that are wanting to get a, like basically a free house, a free ride, they're telling them exactly how to do it so that way they can stay in the house as long as possible. They pay them a one-time fee, a one-time fee between uh, $500 to $1,400 to this company, or not, not exactly a company, this guy who has this Instagram post. And then um, he gives them the keys of the house because he's already changed the locks. Mm -hmm. He's changed the locks because the houses were vacant. People weren't living there. And then once the people are established there, it's you can't get rid of them. It's almost impossible. And so that's that's the start of it. Uh, Eddie, go ahead and play the next clip. He's going to scroll through here. Managers say the squatting problem has exploded over the past year in Metro Atlanta. It's like I gave away two hundred thousand dollars. Is how I feel. Michael Holmes used his life savings to buy this DeKalb County home out of foreclosure eight months ago as a rental property. It's been a nightmare. The alleged squatter living inside has filed more than thirty motions in court to tie up Holmes' effort to get him out. If I can't bring this to some type of resolution, I'll be in jeopardy of filing bankruptcy. One time. Okay, so 
the, this is how savvy they are. These these guys, these uh, people that are doing these homes, these this with the squatter things, they're giving them a handbook, a literal handbook on how to stay in that house as long as possible without paying any rent or anything towards these people. They destroy the homes. They destroy them. And then not only, not only do they destroy the homes, they have gotten savvy enough to figure out how to stay in the house as long as possible. Like they know what motions to file they, and they do not care. And if the homeowner tries to turn off the utilities, guess who gets in trouble? The homeowner, right. because there's people living in the damn house. And even though they have no rights to that house, if the homeowner cuts off the utilities, the homeowner is in trouble. So go to the next clip. Posted on the real estate website Rently. The CEO of the National Rental Home Council says Atlanta is seeing more squatters than anywhere else in the nation. We're seeing situations of trespassing in Atlanta that we're not seeing anywhere else in this country in terms of scale. Back to our house hunt. Okay, pause it. Okay, so here is my tinfoil hat theory, and this is what I want you guys to address. It, it, okay, the number one city for private equity firms to buy up the most affordable houses in the United States is Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm not saying that any of this is true, but this is how my brain thinks. What if a private equity firm hired a kid to put up all these houses on there and said, hey, you want to make some extra cash? Here's are all the vacant homes that we know of in the area. We're going to we're going to give them to you. You can put them on your Instagram or however you want to peddle these. Just try to get as many people in those houses as possible, because if you have a frustrated homeowner that can't get rid of the house and some private investor walks up and says, hey, this I know this you're you're having a problem. And this is, you know, beyond your scope. I We can take care of it. We'll take this off of your hands, right? Mm -hmm. So what if they paid somebody to put these houses up there, advertise them, make sure that people got frustrated enough that they wanted to walk away from the house or it goes back into foreclosure where they could get it even cheaper just so they could take over more neighborhoods. I'm not saying that's true. I'm mm -hmm. saying that's how my brain thinks. So and this Clark the realtor, <laughs> tell us. <laughs> you think uh so this particular video you just showed i actually seen that uh, a couple months ago and um these particular gentlemen were basically they started an instagram account in regards to squatter they call it like it's like a squatter home instagram account where they were telling people hey come here even during the holidays they even had a discount where they were like you can have you can uh, we'll give you a discount for you to move into these homes they go on rently.com they go on zillow of course realtor and they see all these vacant properties that are up for rent and then they go there because with rently you're allowed to self-tour mm -hmm. right so they're giving people the access to go into the house self-tour the particular property and then when they get in there they bust the lock they break the or they take it off the door and then they kind of go inside the house so I, I was kind of thinking something similar to what you were thinking too, Christina, like what if there is someone that is purposely doing this in regards to trying to, like you say, force people into foreclosure so then the corporate companies can possibly go and buy these houses off of the auction block. Like, again, it's not saying that, it's, that it is true or not, but it's just like a almost like you say, like your tinfoil hat, right? It's just like- Yeah, I like, made one today and I, I forgot it in the house. I'm so mad. I made a good tinfoil hat. Uh, the, the, the corporate equity has done significant damage in the housing market. Whether you believe it or not, it's been concentrated in many cities in one specific area. So they control and dictate the price and the market in that area. And people say, oh, well, then when they fold over, it won't matter, right? It won't matter if they fold in and they have to sell those houses. That means that everybody can get them on the cheap. Okay, so let's just, we're going to play a little game. So if they fold in and just say, oh, we can't do it anymore, then they drop the value in that area significantly. Then another investment firm gets those houses on the cheap. <laughs> <laughs> They're not, you know, like nobody's going to be buying homes in bulk like that. But do you know who does? Private equity does. And when one company fails, another company always picks it up every single time. And um, 
Tricon was another company that was a smaller mm -hmm. private equity firm that's just been scooped up by a bigger one. Yeah. And down here we have um, a big management company that was kind of uh, putting rental properties on the market was called Excalibur Homes. Mm -hmm. And they actually just, one of their biggest investors, which was Starwood, actually just relieved them from their management duties and passed it on to Invitation Homes. So they sold some of their homes through Invitation Homes and then they also put the rest of the rental properties onto Invitation Homes. And the only reason why I know this is because I was working with some renter clients down here and they went through Excalibur and then they recently got an email saying that it shifted over to them. So they're buying other properties continuously still down here. And you know, it's what's unfortunate is that sometimes when you have a home listed for sale and you take photographs of that property because you're trying to sell it, so of course you're gonna take pictures of it. If that home is not does not have any furniture in it, that is like literally gold to the squatters, these people's brain. They know exactly. So they know that the house is vacant and all in some states, all you have to do is establish yourself for three days. That's mm -hmm. it. Three days. And they don't make it very difficult sometimes to uh, switch over utilities, for instance. Like you can just do a quick phone call and say, the current owners are this. I want to switch over my, the utilities in my name. I just bought the house or I just rented the house. Utility companies like, fine. Now they have an established bill going to that address. And in, in a lot of states, once you have that, then the, you, it's almost impossible to get them out. It's very difficult. Some states are a lot easier to get them out than others. Um, I saw a story in Atlanta where a lady uh, was able to do an eviction a little bit easier, but it mm -hmm. wasn't like a regular eviction. It was like um, an intruder in, affidavit. She did. That was it. An intruder mm -hmm. affidavit. So have you heard of this? Is this like a thing that they're trying to uh, implement in Atlanta more since there's mm -hmm. more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's so um, we actually had a the local sheriff come to our uh, brokerage and kind of talk about that. So they've mm -hmm. been trying to do that to kind of because the court systems are so backed up and every and it's taking longer and longer to kind of get these evictions uh, passed through. So they started putting in place this intruder affidavit and it's not in every county yet, but it's slowly but surely working itself through different counties. So it's in South Fulton, DeKalb and certain counties down here. But it's just a quicker process to get these trespassers, because that's what they're doing. They're trespassing and they're squatting in people's property. So it's a quicker way to kind of get them out of the house without having, because um, a lot of people now are resorting into like using their weapons and we don't want that to happen. So It's very dangerous. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, uh, like you can pull up any news story, just pull up, just put squatters in and then pick a state, any state. Mm -hmm. And the outcomes and the, what happens during that situation are not all, not positive at all. Um, they're, you know, they always, they tend to find people with criminal records that are squatting. They tend to find people that are using uh, illegal narcotics. They tend to find uh, all sorts of different walks of society that are in your homes. And a lot of them destroy the house. Mm -hmm. So not only did they get the house for free and they, I mean, or just minimal money, uh, they, they tear it up. Like, what's the point of that? I mean, you're getting a house. Why, why would you destroy somebody's property? Exactly. It just makes no sense to me. And, uh, this needs to, as people become more desperate when it comes to housing, cause it is very unaffordable. They're going to find more desperate ways to get into houses that are, are empty. Cause they're like, they're not using it. I, I deserve it. You know, mm -hmm. cause people get to that point when they are so desperate. Mm -hmm. And where there needs to be action taken now, um, whether that's on the state level um, or the county level, the, to make this not happen. You know, yeah. this is Atlanta's hard to get to get a person out. Yeah, we have about um, the last report came out. We had about twelve hundred uh, homes currently uh, occupied with squatters. Um, twelve hundred. Yeah, twelve hundred. Yeah, it's a it's a lot. And what they are doing is that once they get out. They're moving right down the street to the next home because there's so many vacant homes out here for rent because we have these corporate investors sucking up our market. So it's so many different vacant properties. So they literally get out after their whole eviction process and then they go down the street to the other home and go in that home. So they're living out of suitcases. I've seen a tons mm -hmm. of videos. They're just they literally have roller bags full of clothes and, and their, you know, toiletries and stuff. And like you said, they just roll to the next vacant house yeah. and it isn't even in like you would think, oh, well, that's probably just in poor neighborhoods. Oh, oh no, mm -hmm. no, 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 indeed. No. no, they're in really nice neighborhoods too. 
According to the National Rental Home Council, there is over 1,200 properties currently occupied by squatters in the Atlanta area, just like Clark the Realtor said. <laughs> Dang, you know your facts. <laughs> you know your facts. This is utterly not right. Yeah, yeah, it's not. And I don't understand how this ever became a thing. Like, why did a squatter get rights? If you're not paying rent, and like, I'm all for the little guy, you know, but nobody should be terrorizing somebody's house, uh, getting it for absolutely nothing, destroying the property. And how do they have more rights than the owners? Like if I would see my immediate thought is if the owner, if they're not paying, the first thing they need to do is turn off the utilities. And then I found out they can't do that. They'll, mm -hmm. they can be arrested for turning off the utilities. Mm -hmm. They can be arrested for trying to enter their own home that these people never had rights to in the first place. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why that's even possible. Why that law is even on the book. It yeah. makes literal no sense. Did if you someone can go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was about to say when you, as far as that, did you hear about the lady in Queens, New York, where she, uh, the squatters came into her house and she was trying, she had it on the market to sell and they were, it was like a $1 million property. And um, she, the lady came, opened the door. So then she was able to enter the house, but she wanted to change the door, the locks on the door. And she was arrested. She was arrested, yeah, for changing. She the was locks. arrested. I saw that, and then and then another one. They they were able to get into the house, and then they found a um, deceased person inside it, inside the house. Wow. So, um, the origins of squatter rights can be traced back to the Homestead Act of 1862. Okay, well, if, if it was in 1862, maybe we need to adjust this, which allows settlers to claim land in the Western United States with the promise of improving the land and living on it for at least five years. But that, that's an improvement of land. Yeah. That's, a, that, that's, that's, similar to, um, that's similar to like adverse possession, you know, yeah. where if you're on a land for so long and you can actually claim said land, even if it's not yours, which is crazy. Well, I mean, I guess that when you're trying to establish a new country and there's all this widespread land, you know, there's a family that wants to set it up and start making it look nice. I mean, that's one thing. But then, then it's turned into a, a monster. <laughs> it's turned into a monster. Yeah. The, like the amount of stories that have been out there, Eddie, you can start pulling up some articles. But by the way, I saw that there was a bill in Atlanta. And, and yes. I, I think everybody should get a hold of their governor's office mm -hmm. and their congressmen and senators in their, in their state and start addressing this now. Because it, as home prices continue to go up, rent continues to go up, this is going to get to be a bigger problem. We all know in every city, town, doesn't matter where you are across the United States, homelessness has gone up. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be a continue to be a problem um, mm -hmm. if we yeah. don't nip it in the bud right now. Yeah, we have a bill currently uh, that is in the Senate. It's House Bill 1017. It's mm -hmm. Georgia, Georgia Squatters Reform Act. And it is a bill in which they're trying to pass so that if you're trespassing the property without a legal lease from said owner, you will be cited and also arrested. And then if you do, and you have to show that within three days, and then if you go decide to say you have a lease and you mm -hmm. go to court, you have to uh, go to court within that seven day process. And if you are found that the lease is invalid and it's not an actual lease, you will then be arrested and cited as well. So it's they're trying to find ways to get to reduce the squatters and kind of, you know, give homeowners back their properties like they deserve to have them. They have fake leases. That's the other thing too. They'll have a fake lease that's on their phone. And so mm -hmm. like, that's, that's what ties up the courts too, because it's a fake lease. You know, it's fake documentation. Gamer G says, that's crazy. New York, uh, that has, that their removal can take years. California is even worse. Back in, 19 like 88 uh you probably don't know who this actor is his name is michael keaton and he played oh, in this michael keaton yeah okay you know who he is he's a beetlejuice guy yeah. he, he played in a movie where the people were had renovated the downstairs apartment and this guy went ballistic so he only paid rent for one month but because of california squatters rights it took them a year and a half to get rid of him and he terrorized those people, making all sorts of noise. They never knew what he was doing down there ever. And he, he just like would leave trash everywhere. When they finally like got back into the apartment, he totally like de degraded their whole structural integrity integrity of the house. So they literally lost 
their house because of a squatter. And like, what was the point of all that? What, yeah. I mean, what was the point of all that? But this guy just came in, he drove up into like in the movie, he drove up into Porsche. So they're like, Oh, this is gonna be a great renter. <laughs> and he terrorized them for nearly two years. That's almost just like tuned in. Why is squatting considered trust? Uh, why isn't squatter considered trespassing? Good question. I wish I had the answer for you. Um, the, in some instances, like some family members could say that like their 18 year old child is squatting in the, in the a house and that can be used against them. A squatter is someone who finds a vacant home and begins living in without a property's owner permission, without claiming ownership, meaning they claim they have the right to live on the property. They can claim the residency uh, by receiving utility bills on the property. Uh, a trespasser is an individual or a group of people who enter and occupy a person's property without permission, but they differ from squatters in that they don't claim to have any right to the property. Essentially, trespassers are committing a crime without mm. the same rights as squatters. However, it is declared an emergency situation by law. The person may be exempt from the crime of trespassing. Why though? I don't, I wish I knew the answer. Like, I don't understand why a squatter would have rights to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm I, like, I don't understand it either. Sim like you just said that reference with the Michael Keaton in the movie, as far as that, uh, mm -hmm. my aunt had a similar situation. So my aunt owns a couple of properties actually in the New Jersey area and she had a, a tenant in there as well. And they stopped paying the rent and they stayed in the property, but then they also started renting out rooms in her house. So they were making money from renting out the rooms, but not paying her her rent. And then she went to court and she didn't realize, she thought they wasn't going to show up in court. They came to court and they kept having motions to keep going. And so a year later and almost close to $40,000 in damages because they messed up like a pipe burst in her in the basement and they didn't get it fixed. So it created water damage and it's just been a, a mess. So, so here, uh, um, here in New Orleans, there was a, a person that was putting a house on Airbnb. So they paid rent once and uh then they put the house on airbnb they had a bunch of people in there again the whole thing was squatters rights uh they were able louisiana don't play like i don't know if you know that so they didn't get they didn't get as long of a, a ride as as uh, other states allow for i was kind of surprised that georgia has so much leniency towards squatters uh and how incredibly uh difficult it is for an actual homeowner to be able to uh, you know, get rid of them. Um, yeah. it's, that is insanity to me. Um, squatters all of a sudden are big news everywhere. Something is different, differently going on. I, I think it's, um, I think this is one more way that the pandemic has affected people in a way because people are again, in a point of desperation. We have a shortage of supply of homes for the amount of people that need them. We are, it depends on what statistic you look at. It's between five to 7 million homes short. Um, and then we have all these vacant homes across the country, whether they're owned by people that have their second home, it's like their vacation home. Corporations hold on to them because they're trying to play with the market. They do it all the time. Um, but we have it, a lot of vacant housing that's owned by people. And so when people have desperation financially, more desperate situations happen like squatting. Um, but I, I think it's also to create more anger towards people that are homeless or are uh, like, there's going to be that one person that, that had no choice. You know, there's going to be that mom that like, that was in a bad situation. She just didn't know where to go. And so she found a vacant home and she put her kids in there. You know, there's going to be that one. And, but most of the people are doing it for nefarious reasons. I mm -hmm. still believe, and I will say it again, for those who just jumped on the stream, I believe that squatters in this whole situation is another scheme because the way this was set up uh, that in Atlanta, where this is the biggest problem, is that there's these Instagram accounts with all these vacant homes on it. The people that set up these accounts got the list of homes and pictures from somewhere. From somewhere and somehow they list it for a very cheap price, one time fee. They give them the keys. I think 
I think private equity is trying to force out more people out of the Atlanta area because it is the number one market for mm -hmm. investors to invest in is Atlanta, Georgia. And so I think that they are they are instigating this and then they get a little kickback. These guys get a little kickback because they're going to get that that money from there and they get it from private equity because then that would if the, the homeowner itself can't make the payments, can't get rid of them. Private equity can scoop right in there and say, we're going to save the day. We're going to take care of your problem. We'll take this property off of your hands and, and we'll take it from here. Now they have another house under their belt. Or they know that the homeowner is going to get so incredibly frustrated, hopefully get so frustrated that they stop making payments on it. And then it will go foreclosure. And then they're going to be right there at the door owning it again. So. Yeah, it's a it's definitely is a, nice. is a big problem in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, they're creating these accounts, um, and what they're, and then like they said in the news report, they're all, they're telling them what to do, like how to go to court, how to file the motions, you know. Um, they're, they're going to school. Yeah, they're, they're going to school. <laughs> like it's it's crazy because prior to this, of course, media makes a big headline about it. So I don't know if people really knew squatter had, squatters had rights the way they have. Um, but now with it being such a, a global thing as far as the media pushing it out more and more, I feel like more and more people are now like, well, let me just stay here or let me just go into this house. And and like you said, as far as the corporate companies, people are leaving their houses because a lot of them down here in Georgia, uh, a lot of them are squatted in just from my knowledge as far as when I go out and show clients like rental properties. But then also what's happening is that when they come there, they... Um, You'll, they'll still have it on our MLS where it says like this property is available for rent because none of these companies are actually checking on the houses. They don't have like no one coming by there to check on anything daily. And a lot of the squatters down here, they like to move in at night. Like mm -hmm. we've had a lot of cases where they'll move in at night. And then all of a sudden within that time period, like you said, they're going online, they're signing up for utility bills right away. And then by the time you turn around the next day or the day after, they already got a water bill or electric bill one. So it's like, how do you now remove them from the property? Because mm -hmm. once something's in the name, you can't force them out. And, you know, so. Well, uh, we got a super chat. Super chat. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mark Black with the $5 super chat says, squatter rights have been a thing. The issue is now so many are struggling and people are squatting about uh, migrants doing it too. I, I'm going to say this. So there's a viral video out there of a guy um, telling people that are illegal how to do this. Um, it's gone. He had over, I think, I think it was like 14 million views on TikTok. And basically he's telling them exactly how to do this. Um, so I, I, I think, I think the media is covering this because of the fact that first of all, Migrants is a big hot topic topic. People love to just talk about that and complain about that. And, you know, like they it's a, it's a thing. And then then there's this viral video that comes out of this guy showing you how to do it. You know, he's he tells him exactly how to do it. And it's just one more layer. But um, I think by emphasizing this, it just creates more anger. Right. Mm -hmm. So it gets more clicks. So you're showing this so that way you're watching more and more and more um the like like just take the whole immigration thing out of it it's it's a problem and it's becoming a growing problem it seems to be very concentrated in atlanta mm -hmm. what would be the reason why all of a sudden out of nowhere that a group of people would start uh showing people how to squat in Atlanta. Why all of a sudden is Atlanta the biggest place for people to go to for as far as squatting is concerned? And to me, what is the biggest buyer of homes right now in Atlanta, Georgia? Private equity. Private and that's equity. what my brain keeps thinking. I'm not, there's no, not a stitch, not a lick of proof of this, but that's what my brain thinks because they're mm -hmm. sneaky and they're, they, they love to plan and they want more houses. They like that city. Yeah. And I, outside I just, and outside of even the squatting down here, um, I know you've seen it in regards to people even creating uh, fake deed or, or stealing people's deeds and um, and stuff going up into like foreclosure on an auction block. It, it's just been a whole mess down here in Atlanta with the housing. Well, yeah. So there is a whole scam. Um, if anybody doesn't know that you can create fake deeds that basically force you out of your own home. There was a lady, poor thing. She, she her and her husband had lived in that house 
for uh, 57 years. Mm -hmm. And her and her husband, her husband's in his 70s, and um, they they raised all their kids there. They had had their paid, house paid off for almost 15 years. All of a sudden, they got a notice in the mail about a second mortgage. And they're like, we didn't pull out a second mortgage. They kept calling and calling about it. And no one could give them any resolution on it. You know, what happened? And then all of a sudden, the, the foreclosure notices started coming in. And they lost their house because somebody made a fake mortgage, second mortgage, on their house that didn't exist were using forgery and they were forced out of their home. The police showed up to their house. Um, that's a little bit different than squatters rights, but it's another layer to forcing people out of their homes that didn't deserve to be out of their homes in the first place. Super chat. Super chat. Thank you. <laughs> Charles G with a $5 super chat says, I think in New York, if you fix the home, you can keep it and sell it. Although with overpriced homes in California, maybe I should do this first. Just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, um, you know, here in Louisiana, there is a law in the books that if you maintain a property, I think it's I think it's 10 years. I, it's been a while since the whole real estate school thing. But if you maintain a property for 10 years with nobody claiming making claim to that property, you, you own it. You, you can make a you can file a claim to own that piece of property. Um, yeah, that's something I, I believe similar. it's 10 years. Yeah, that's something similar here in Georgia uh, within a certain mm -hmm. time frame. But if you go down, I believe, seven years uh, and file color title, I believe, you can mm -hmm. kind of get it uh, within that seven year period. So C-O-L-O-R title? Uh, is that what it's color? Yeah, C-O-L-O-R. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. like a rainbow? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you made it look you made it look pretty. So now you get this. Yeah. <laughs> Solely 846 says, uh, this is why security systems and uh motion detectors can come into play to catch intruders early, not to give them time to change the locks, etc. Yeah. You know what? If you have a vacant property or a um and, you know, anybody should be doing this anyways. But if you have a vacant property or a second property, like get yourself some cameras and, you know, show exactly when these people show up to your house and, and roll in and everything. Um, with the media showing it as much as they are, it's going to give ideas to people that never had an idea before. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I can go find a house and not have to pay rent. Let me let me get in on the scam. You know, mm -hmm. um, the more attention to it, it always uh, leads to more of this happening. And I think that's um, that's what some people are hoping for, um, mm -hmm. especially since there's so many uh, ways to get around it. I mean, how would a in my brain again, because I'm always throwing back everything to private equity. Well, how would this guy who has an Instagram account with all these vacant homes, for some reason, he has all the keys to all the uh, pictures to how would he also have all the documentation somebody would need to stay in that house as long as possible, a basic exactly. handbook with all the summons and uh, paperwork. How do you think he came across that? Some 26 year old kid, mm -hmm. like all of a sudden out of the blue, how, how do you think that's possible? It's, it's not possible. There's, mm -hmm. there's something more underbelly nefarious going on in my opinion. Um, like I want to get your opinion in the chat. So you guys, if you have an opinion for this, you let me know. Um, and like, you and let like me know. You, and like you said, how does he have all the, the keys? That was another thing where they were like, he has all the keys to like every property, even properties that are off, like off market. How do you have yeah. the keys? Some, some, some smells fishy. Uh, the fact that squatters rights have become common law is, uh, uh, yeah, it's illogical. That's like saying, uh, I didn't steal your car. I was just squatting. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're exactly right. Because the house doesn't move, then all become now, now it becomes somebody else's. It. I just don't know why this still exists. I. I just don't know. Um, Jesse C says it comes from the idea that the land is considered at its best use when it's used or occupied. Yeah, I. I. I understand that. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder, you know, those of us who are in HOAs, if the HOA could get more involved with this situation because um, they're they're self-governed, right? Mm -hmm. And they, as much as I hate an HOA, maybe this would be the one time that they could, uh, you know, step in because they they have a, their own little individual governments in there, mm -hmm. so they could file a motion to remove people. Um, from from those homes if they don't own it. 
Um, yeah, we have, um, like I said, I've been privy to uh, a lot of this happening because it's happening really, uh, it's happening a lot in Atlanta. So that's why I, when I reached out to you, I was like, I would love to talk about this particular topic because I have personally seen it happen over and over again with my colleagues that are up there that are realtors out in the market as well. And mm -hmm. um, even recently, me and a colleague, we went door knocking because we like to door knock just to, you know, tell people about what's happening in the real estate industry. And the one of the, the um, ladies that we door knocked on her door, she was like, we just had a squatter across the street and their community had an HOA, but their HOA, like you said, was able, since they were self-governed, they were able to get the squatter out. But they had a uh, squatter living in a, uh, what, $600,000 house. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, it's, I don't know, it's just crazy how these people, like I said, they enter in through the night because what happened is they entered in through the garage. So mm -hmm. some way, somehow they got in through the garage and they got inside the house and I'm, I don't know, I'm just baffled. Well, that, that that's a good point. So if you, another thing too, that you guys can do, if you're, if you like, let's just say you don't have the ability to do cameras. One thing you can do is get a garage lock. So for your big door, you can get a garage door lock that will, won't allow it to lift up. Um, that, that could be, make it a little bit easier, you know, let's make it as impossible as possible to get, you know, a squatter to walk in. Um, because you know, they just, they're not going to take care of your property and they're certainly not going to come around and be like, Oh, sorry about that. Big mistake. You know, they they know what they're doing and, mm -hmm. um, they're getting, they're getting lessons on how to stay there as, as long as possible. And so. they're going online and they're finding uh, fake leases and they're drawing up these fake leases that act like they have a real lease in place. So. Yep. Yep. And these guys who are trying to get the, the houses filled up, they're putting these houses, mm -hmm. they're actually even putting these houses up on Zillow because you can do it for free. And they're also putting them on Craigslist and Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. So they, they know what they're doing. Long Beach Joe Jets, uh, Joe Jet says, salutes and respect to Christina and the panel and the chat. Hello. Hello. Oh, nice Hello. to see you. <laughs> um, uh, there was another story of a guy who had, this was during, um, back during the financial crisis, back in 08. Again, there was a lot of people that were losing their homes. And uh, a, this family in Texas moves into a house, very nice house in a very nice neighborhood, moves into the house and starts living there. So the house at that time was in foreclosure. It had been in foreclosure. And because, you know, during that, during that process during that time, foreclosures were taking forever because there was such a backlog of them. The guy had established all sorts of things and was paying the property tax, by the way, Oh wow! for the past five years, he got wow. a house that was valued at $500,000 for basically nothing because he squatted there for so long. He had his wow. kids enrolled in school and everything. Wow. So some of these people know exactly what they're yeah. doing exactly what they're doing question with the new real estate commission coming oh commission's coming should real estate agents disclose possible changes if the list price prior to july so just just for fyi um if the house before july was listed for 650 after july it's going to be listed for 650 and you can't remove like they some people are think in their they think that the house now is now six percent less because of this and just to clear up some confusion the house is listed with a listing agent and then the listing agent negotiates the price of the commissions with with the you know with the sellers the sellers at this point you know if they're having difficulty selling their house they can still offer a buyer's agent compensation. In a lot of cases, you're going to see that's still the way that real estate transactions are worth. But because the house at, before the commission structure was changed was 650, it's still 650. The comps in the area don't change because commissions change. The comps will remain the same. Uh, but that was a really good question because that came up not too long ago in another panel discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, cause the, the public now thinks that now all homes are 6% less, mm -hmm. but that's not how it's, that's not how it works. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Katie rock, uh, K K 
Joe Rocky <laughs> says, my agent had uh, had a listing where squatters attempted to exercise imminent domain over the property. Mm -hmm. The squatters claimed that they were not subject to U.S. laws. Crazy. So uh, there is a, a whole group of people called sovereign citizens. Mm -hmm. They do not have any uh, identification, no social security numbers, and they they govern themselves over their own set of laws. And even though they're in the courts and uh, they're they're told what the law of the land is, they um, because they've been raised this way, they feel like they're very correct on their thinking. Um, so yeah, I, I can see that happen. Um, if you ever really want to go down a rabbit hole of, wow, um, just watch a bunch of videos on of court cases with sovereign citizens. Um, I wonder how they were able to exercise the eminent domain. Cause particularly most of that is traditionally for like, say, if they want to um, widen the street, like a public type of, you know, service thing or create a park or do those things. So uh, that's, that's very interesting that they were able to exercise that eminent domain on a property as a squatter. Every state has their own law though, when it comes mm -hmm. to eminent domain. So it might be different in that specific state. Um, mm -hmm. Like in our area, the, like the, the county or the government is the one that says, this is now eminent domain. Mm -hmm. um, they're supposed to give it to the value of what the homes are selling for in the area, but they always try to go cheap. <laughs> they <laughs> always try to go cheap, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so um, whenever you get offered that, just uh, work with an attorney to get as much money as possible because it isn't just the, the cost of the property when it comes to eminent domain, you still have to move. And that's a moving cost that they need to pay you for and uh, everything else. So work with an attorney if you ever run into eminent domain. So uh, Candace Musso says, uh, could the owner squat on the squatters? Ooh, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like you can't, so the, I don't, I don't know how it works in Georgia, but you mm. cannot enter the house, even though you're the homeowner, once someone has established established residency in there, you can't just walk into the house, even though it's your house. Just like if you're renting a house with a lease, even though you're the owner of that house, you can't just walk in on people. Um, it's it's the same, unfortunately, when it comes to squatters or people that are, are illegally there. Yeah, that's um, the same. That's the same here in Georgia. You just can't enter the house, even if you, like you say, even if you are the owner of the landlord, you have to give notice to say, hey, I'm, we will be entering the house at this time and this period, uh, but you just can't just walk in the house. That's considered, that will be considered, which is crazy, is trespassing, but they, you know, they trespass to get into your house, but that would be considered trespassing in Georgia as well. National Disgrace says, why don't people squat uh, at a mansion then? There's some BS going on here. So Maybe I will say California. this. Yeah, they'll they'll do it in California, mm -hmm. and they'll they'll do it in the mo the nicest neighborhoods. Like I, that one family that did it, they lived in that it's, house for five years, and nobody knew. Uh, I think the but the thing is, is that in a lot of uh, upper end luxury communities, you have gated communities, you have an, a very active HOA. There, they know how to handle this situation. They've had it established how to handle this situation a lot better than your smaller. Uh, communities, uh, smaller HOAs, uh, the homes that don't have HOAs. So um, yeah, that's why you don't see it. Yeah. Oh, nothing. Be happy that that it feels like that. I don't know if you know what I'm, that is. So there's um, yeah. the uh, the World Economic Forum. They came out with this whole plan, basically saying that we're pretty much going to rent our lives away. And they they gave out this whole thing to the big investors saying this is how we want the world to run. Um, but it's, you know, obviously it's state, it's keep crippling people, you know, yeah. generational wealth will disappear. Um, that's why I think that this whole thing with squatters, there's something more to it. There's just the, the, they're getting too, they're too smart for this, right? Yeah. The, you know, a, a 24 year old or 26 year old kid with an Instagram account has keys, has paperwork, has has all everything you need to do to stay in the house as long as possible. Something smells fishy. Mm -hmm. And it it exploded overnight in Atlanta. It went yeah. from, you know, an occasional problem to over 1,200 houses. That's why uh, Clark the Realtor wanted to come on here. It exploded overnight at 1,200 houses, squatters just sitting in there. Mm -hmm. Super chat. Thank you. Yep. Living in Omaha, David Manny says, $5 super chat. 
How about owners of vacant homes? Uh, are the, those owners really need to protect, uh, per, to be proactive in this type of environment? I always enjoy your content. Well, I always enjoy you coming in here, David. Thank you. You're a valued member. You're here every week and I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, so I think that if you have a vacant property at this time, um, I'll, I'm gonna ask you some tips, but one of the, mm -hmm. the biggest tips is to go ahead and get yourself a, a, a monitored security system, not just one that you, you know, you can watch yourself, get yourself a monitored security system that's connected to like the police department. What would be another tip you would say? Um, I would say just make sure if, if it's vacant and if you're local to always visit your house once a day, I know it can, it can seem a lot, or if you have a, a local realtor you're working with to list your house, ask them, can they come drive by the community, check on the house, or even if you're renting it as your man, the management company. I always tell people, if you're renting a property, go with a management company that doesn't manage so many properties, because then you have more of an intimate thing where you can actually be able to say, hey, if you guys mind going over to check on the house. So I always tell people just be mindful, just to check frequently, because like I say, down here in Georgia, they've been moving in at night. So yeah. yeah. And Clark, the realtor said that, uh they've been uh, coming through the garage. So mm -hmm. that would be another tip I'd tell everybody is to go ahead and get yourself a garage door lock. Make it very difficult for them to get in the house. Have yourself, somebody in the chat had said, get yourself some floodlights. Nothing nothing freaks out people when you, they see a light come on. Mm -hmm. um, if your house is vacant and you have furniture on there, have timers put on those uh that house you know where the light comes on it's like when the sun goes down mm -hmm. and it turns off during uh the day you know those timer timer lights are really great you know so mm -hmm. just go ahead same with the television so that it sounds like there's something going on there um there's and, noise in the house and they were saying uh, something else too where i don't know if everybody would do this but if you buy a house you put it in the llc but then you also create a, uh, a rental agreement between you and your LLC. So when they move in, you can say you have your rental agreement already in place. And so if they try to create one, it's a false document. So it's different little things they were, you know, telling people that to do, but I know everyone's not going to go out and set up an LLC, you know, so. Overjoyed has a good question. It says, what about abandoned housing? Could we uh, have a program that offers a path to ownership if squatters provide the upkeep? Um, so I think what, so you would have to find out who the original owners were to the house, right? And if you had a, um, a property that you were upkeeping and you happen to be a squatter, um, there is a path to ownership, especially if they've abandoned the property altogether, but you would have to work closely with the people who own that property in order for that to happen. Governments can't get involved in that because it's not their house to, to do that. Um, but anybody can establish anything with a seller. They may say no, but at least, you know, you tried. Um, Debbie Brady says, wow, 723 watching, smash that like button. It's 752 now. <laughs> <laughs> National Disgrace says, can you squat your, uh, your own house and not, oh, we already did that. We already did that question, Eddie. Come on, <laughs> come on, Eddie. Where are Eddie sleeping? If anybody doesn't know, Eddie's the producer in the background. Also, my husband extraordinaire. He never shows his face. He's very good looking, but we always say thankful. We're always thankful for Eddie. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. Mr. Byron says, how in the world squatters move into a house and nobody, nothing can be done about it? Um, who knows? Like every state has different policies. Some states are making it very difficult for the squatters. Like, you know, you, you, even if they've lived there for two months, they're like, dude, get the hell out. You know, like, you, I don't, you know, you're going to have to uh, get out. But these squatters are, are savvy. They're very savvy. And when they get with these, some of these companies or not companies, but they get with the, a lot of these people, they're training them exactly how to stay in the house as long as possible. They've already printed off all the court documents that they need. So that way they can keep filing motions and prolong the process as much as possible. I've seen it. I've seen it myself that, you know, again, five years, these people lived in the house for absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing. And they know what they're doing and they're intentionally making it happen. And, um, and like I said earlier, there's a guy who went extremely viral for, uh, for, showing people how to stay in, in, in houses for free. Um, he was telling them exactly how to do it on, on TikTok. 
So I'm like, can you hear? I'm sorry that um, my next door neighbor is practicing his trumpet. Can you hear it? Because <laughs> okay, no, we cannot hear. Your... <laughs> okay. It would be cool though. You know, everybody's good with okay. a little bit of music. Okay. <laughs> Susan has an opinion. I just said this yesterday to my husband. These private equity firms are behind all these squatters. I think so. I think you're right, Susan. At the very least, oops, Eddie, go back. <laughs> I bet he lost the, at the very least, they're uh, responsible for a large amount of media covering it. Exactly. I, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. I think you're genuinely right. So th like maybe they're, it, the end game is that they look like the saviors that got, you know, these people uh, out of the area and they were able to purchase the homes and now the neighborhoods look nice again. I don't, I don't, who knows what their total end game is other than to own as much as possible and make as much money as possible. That's always their end game. But um, it kind I don't, of, I'm sorry. Uh -huh. go ahead. Go ahead, no, you go ahead. I was going to say it kind of sucks because they're squeezing out the, the mom and pop investors, you know, when the corporate, come in and I always tell people, you want to have, again, that intimate feeling with a mom and pop investor. Cause sometimes I've seen it all the time too, where you create a human, human connection and you can be, and they'll be like, oh, it's okay. You can miss a month of rent, of course, you know, and they're okay with it for you to be able to turn around and make it up later on. But when there's a corporation, they don't care. Like, they're just like, give me my money, so. Well, a lot of these rental houses in uh, Milwaukee and Kansas City that are owned by corporate investors, they start off really great to get the renters in there, but then they start ignoring big problems over time because they don't care. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times uh, they, you know, like they just don't care. And so I just think that this is, if they monopolize more markets, we're going to see more neighborhoods turn to garbage because they don't care about properties like the mom and pop investors. But if you look at the national media, when it comes to mom and pop investors, they vilify them. They mm -hmm. say they're the issue for the housing problem. They're the problem. So yeah, the guy who owns three houses in the area, he's <laughs> exactly. the big problem, but the corporation that owns 50 houses, they're, they're the saviors. They're going to, they're going to make things right. Give me a break, exactly. but you'll read it. Like I'm dead serious. Anybody that ever reads anything about corporate investors, there's always going to be a line that says that mom and pop investors own more houses than corporations. And really they're the problem. They, they literally vilify them and it makes absolute no sense. They try to insult our intelligence mm -hmm. when it comes to this. And I think that the more we have these types of discussions, especially when it comes to squatters and then all of a sudden this sudden media uh, coverage on it, the more I think we're going to be exposing who's actually behind it. I know it sounds so tinfoil hat, but I really do believe that a corporate uh, corporate investors, private equity is behind it because they're trying to get as many homes as possible. Yep. Gamer G says, question, why do states pass more strict rules to prevent deed transfers without uh, proper information or at least some notification that notifies the reg uh, registered homeowner before committing? Um, I, I, this hasn't been a problem here in, in my area in Louisiana, but it has been in yours, uh, Clark. What, yeah. Why is this become so easy for them? Well, um, so they have recently in some counties put a, a fraud alert for your deeds. So if you go register with the, with your local county, reach out to your local county, um, city hall, your municipality and ask them, do they have a fraud uh, register where you can register yourself online? You will get alerts every time anything changes with your deed. So they're slowly trying to put it in place. Um, Georgia is a state where you don't have to show up in the the court, uh, the deed and record records place or whatever to to file. Oh, the deed. they don't. You they, can, you'd have to record it with the courthouse. No, Your you can just do it on. You can do it online. They made and it so, too easy. Yeah, it's too easy. So people can just go online now, and that's how they're transferring the deeds. Um, so I always tell my clients that I work with, I'm like, just if you can, if it's if you have it in your county, ask them, can you put that fraud alert on for your deed, just so it can alert you with any activity, because I don't want you to go in your house and then next thing you know, they take out a second mortgage or they transfer the deed, then they come knocking at the door and telling you you need to get out and or you're foreclosed, because we're also a non a non judicial state for foreclosures, so you don't have to go to court to actually get foreclosed on in Georgia. So it's a lot of. As, um, I guess accessibility in this state where people can just do things. That, I call it the run amok state. I say Georgia, Florida, and certain other states are the run amok state where nothing's in place and is not um, regulated properly. So people are just running amok. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ooh, 
something happened. All right. First, uh, first dump, uh, first dump all squatters rights. Second is to, uh, is all, this is all, all a distraction. Look, squirrel. It's not the criminal corporation stealing homes. It's the other people. Corporate squatting should go viral. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think it's an issue. I, I, I genuinely think that in the Atlanta area, for a sudden surge of vacant homes being established by squatters all at one time is a real issue. Because it, it, it was, like I said, it was like overnight. Somebody flipped a light switch on. All these Instagram accounts come up. All these houses get listed. There are these young kids running these accounts. They all have keys to these houses. Something's not right. Not only that they've established exactly how uh, these people are going to stay in the house as much as possible, how to file motions with the courthouse. Some 26-year-old punk kid with an Instagram account doesn't know how to do that. He, if you saw the guy who does it, He's not an attorney that went to college for the last eight years. No, 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 no. <laughs> he, you know, he's looking for a quick buck because mm -hmm. every one of those he gets $1,400 yep. for. Mm -hmm. During Christmas, he offered her a special. A special it, was yeah. five, it was $500. $500. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think the longer they are able to stay in the houses, maybe he gets more of a kickback from whoever is behind it. I, like I said at the beginning, the very beginning, this is my tinfoil hat moment. I believe that there is somebody else behind all of this because it just seems too organized. And these guys that are doing it or girls, whatever, these people that are behind it seem way too organized, have way too much time on their hands. Like there's something more to it than what you see on the surface. So 88% say no squatters rights. Uh, yeah. So I asked, I'm like, do you think squatters should have rights for vacant okay. homes? That was the question in the poll. And uh, Eddie, can you pull that back up? So 88% uh, said no, no, mm -hmm. that squatters shouldn't have right, rights. The rest uh, is like a tie between yes and mm -hmm. no. Uh, yes, I'm not sure. I, mean, I agree. I don't feel like you should have rights to something that's not yours. You know, people Absolutely. work so hard in this country, especially for a home ownership. It's so expensive. It's one of the biggest purchases you'll ever make. So we're already going to be paying for it for the rest of our life, right? With property taxes and home insurance. After Not only that, the police, off. how much time the police have wasted on exactly. people that shouldn't have been there in the first place. Mm -hmm. uh, the you're right. Those government, we pay extra what money to the government because of the, the police force. We have to pay, you know, more in taxes because we're trying to get them out. And the court system and the police force, it's just not fair to people, um, especially homeowners that work so hard their whole life just to own a home. So. Yep. Yeah, everybody needs to start reviewing their HOA uh, documents, too, if you live in Atlanta. Uh, Overjoyed says, what if they can't uh, find any relatives after the uh, original owners are deceased? Um, you have to talk to a title attorney in your specific area when it comes to that, because everybody state has a different policy when it comes to that. Here in the state of Louisiana, they always find a relative. You know, <laughs> on, honest to God, if you if you ever like are planning on selling a piece of property and you're like, well, I'm not sure if anybody, you know, like I'm not sure ever who all owns this. The deeds are so old. You just put up a for sale sign, and all of a sudden, people will rise from the dead <laughs> and to, to say that's my land, and they'll come up with something to say that it is. Um. Could uh, could you have several families squat in one place? Yeah, there mm -hmm. that uh, all of this is going on in Atlanta. A lot of times, it isn't just one person; mm -hmm. it's several, and yeah, sometimes it's, it's a whole family. Sometimes it's a couple families. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it it's is, just friends. It's like one person will have the lease, and the other they'll invite other people to come in and, and squat in different rooms, and it doesn't. Yeah, have to they're making be, money off of them. Yeah, so. The, the, like like the, the squatters established, you know, their, this is their house because they decided to uh, transfer the uh, electricity bills in their name. Right. Mm -hmm. And then and then they they start putting on Airbnb, renting out the rooms mm -hmm. to other people or they put it on Facebook or a marketplace. We'll rent this room for, to you for, you know, 100 bucks a month or something like that. And then they get extra money mm -hmm. in the long run. Yep. Yeah. And, and like I said earlier, but uh, maybe some of you didn't hear if the person who's squatting calls a utility company and has any of those utilities put in their name, it makes it twice as hard to remove them. So a lot of times it's very easy to establish new uh, 
new utilities. And so that's what they do. They'll, they'll call up the water company and they'll just have it put in their name. And now they have an established address. They now have more right to the property than they did if they didn't have that in their name. And they know that. And that's what they try to do. Um, I think that's one small thing that utility companies could do instead of um, allowing people to switch over uh, so easily mm -hmm. that um, there has to be some documentation that's sent to the owner, um, you know, however they want to do that, sent to the owner that they are verifying that these utilities are being transferred to this specific, specific company or person, you know, like they don't yeah. just do it over a phone call. Yeah, I know. Um, I had a um, scenario down here where I was, like I said, I was helping someone move into a rental down here. And I guess the last person that was in the rent, that particular property had created some fraudulent action. So they did mm -hmm. actually make you verify when the person tried to turn their utilities on. But that was mm -hmm. just one instance. I haven't seen that. Like, that's rare down here. But they had said to that particular person was like, hey, there was some fraudulent activity going on in this particular property. So we need you to send over documentation of an actual physical proof of a lease. Mm -hmm. and um id and stuff so i was like i said it, that's what they should do but because they don't do it i was when i when they told me that i was like what i'm confused but but that is something that they should have in place though i feel like that's the best way to kind of hopefully stop the whole squatting thing too well if you if you are do have a uh, vacant home in another area like it's your second home or whatever um just try to see if there's a way that you can put some kind of lock on your account that doesn't allow for that to happen um, I don't know if that's even a thing, but it doesn't hurt to try or at least ask. So um, just to put that out there, Harold Johnson said, if uh, what if the property owner would pay someone to live in the property until it's sold? That's not a bad idea. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad, not idea. A bad idea. It's like you're like a house sitter. Mm -hmm. You're like you're just basically watching the house until it's sold. Mm, I bet you bad. there's a ton of college kids that would be like, <laughs> heck, yeah. <laughs> You know, and that, like, and then, but basically, you're kind of be setting up a a, a free lease. Basically, yeah. you know, you establish some rules. Uh, you can stay here. I'll I'll just watch it until the house is sold. Just know that there's going to be people coming in, taking a look at this house while you're living there. That, that is an good. excellent idea. Yeah. That is a business That's opportunity. A, yeah. a realtor. <laughs> go hook it up. Yeah. Go to go to uh, UG. No, go to uh, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech. Yeah, Georgia. Yeah, go up to Georgia Tech. <laughs> Talk to a bunch of college kids there. Say, hey, you want to be like you're going to be living out of suitcases, but mm -hmm. that's not a bad that idea. Is, yeah, that's really smart. And especially nowadays with the rents being so high, if you can have like free a free rental place to kind of crash your head at in the meantime, so between times. Yeah, wow. and all they have to do is maintain the house during that yeah. time. I bet you there would be a lot of kids that'd oh. be like, heck yeah, <laughs> heck yeah. And then you could like, you can totally screen them ahead of time too. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a genius idea. Cause you could do like a, a credit report on them ahead of time. And then they have to like basically show that they have, uh, they are enrolled at mm -hmm. uh, Georgia, Tech. Uh, yeah, Georgia Tech. They have to prove that. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> If you do that, give that comment or the, the you know, give them a little kickback there. I got that it. Was yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was... <laughs> That's a good idea. Um, so what about an abandoned house on three acres? Well, again, that would depend on the state. You could officially squat there in some states. It depends on how many years you maintain that property. Um, uh, I, I, I just don't, I can't give you a blanket answer because it's, it's so specific. It's completely area, uh, area specific when it comes to squatters rights all the way down to the County and the city that this is happening in, um, in the, like I said, in the state of Louisiana, if you maintain a piece of property for, it has to be 10 years. It's, I think it's 10 years. I'm pretty sure it's 10 years. And you have to prove that you maintain that property for 10 years in order for you to claim ownership to it. So, yep. Long Beach Joe Jet says, talk, uh, talk that talk, Christina. You're making some great points. Well, somebody else made a really good point and a business <laughs> opportunity. Yeah. Somebody needs to, like, I love that idea. <laughs> that was definitely a good idea. I didn't even think about that. That is genius. Yeah. Oh, this is why these conversations are so great when we mm. do these live streams. I learn something new for my subscribers pretty much every single week. No, every single week. Not pretty much every single week. Yeah. And then I love the comments that come in after the stream too, because it mm. really makes me think. I'm like, wow, I didn't even think of that. Wow, that's awesome. And then I kind of like dig more. I end up going down rabbit holes when it comes to <laughs> corporate equity, that's for sure. 
Uh, Steve-O says, alert. I got a bunch of squatters in my shed. Two squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love squirrels. My my brother doesn't like um, pigeons or squirrels. He doesn't like oh. those. He's like, they're gross. He says, pigeons are just rats with wings. Like rats. And I'm like, I, I like a pigeon. Poor pigeons. <laughs> I feel bad for pigeons. And then <laughs> squirrels are just cute. They're just trying to get the nut, you know, for the, for the next season. That's it. <laughs> they're good squatters. We like oh. a squirrel. <laughs> Uh, Dina says, if you could, if you make it noticed that uh, the house is not vacant, like a sign, would that allow you to have any legal rights? Mm -hmm. If you can make it noticed that your house is not vacant. Oh, you're basically. Um, like a no trespassing sign or something? Like a no trespassing so sign? That doesn't stop them. Mm -hmm. No, that wouldn't. It doesn't give them any. It doesn't give you more legal right to. Uh, a, a kick out a squatter just because you put up a sign. Um, like once they got their foot in the door, it's very difficult to get them out. And this is, this is a sophisticated plan they got going on. They give people the keys, they open the door and they walk in. They have fake documentation that says they have a legal right to the house because they made a fake lease. And they're, that's what they're showing. They know, this is so sophisticated. They know exactly what motions to file in the courthouse. So the, it isn't just it isn't just some random person off the street all of a sudden just going in the house. Don't I'm not saying that doesn't happen. Of course it does. But the what's going on in Atlanta is very. It's like a it's a very sophisticated crime ring type thing. Yeah. Yep. I'm so glad you brought this to our attention. <laughs> it's just. Yep. It's just a lot like. It's just a lot going on down here, and it's and it's crazy in a state where it's, we're having a, a great like influx down here of so many people moving to Georgia because of like the tax incentives and everything happening in this area. But we're seeing the rise of so many squatters because of that. So we're like on one side we have a bill trying to be passed in the House Senate, the um that like I said the House Bill ten seventeen, but then also they pass another bill for tax incentives down here for like film tax incentives. So it's like, you get a good side, well, or ho hopefully both of them are great sides as far as both of the bills being passed, but it's like the influx of people coming here, but then also you get the squatters that are, you know, taking over the properties. Well, I used to live in a small, um, almost country town called Roswell, Georgia. That's now a booming yeah, metropolis, yeah, Roswell. <laughs> right? Right next to it, this is in, in the nineties, right next to it was this, Hobunk in town that we used to make fun of that all the the like country kids went to school in Alpharetta. Oh. That is a huge metropolis. Mm. Atlanta has been growing for years. And uh yeah, it's it's always been big. Um yeah. I just but the the involvement of private equity during the time during the pandemic mm. was not one of the highest in Atlanta at one time in one month. They bought 23 or 24 percent of all the single family homes in one month. That's a lot. That's yeah. a lot of houses just for us, uh, for uh, private equity to be purchasing. And it was just in Atlanta. So that's oh, yeah. what I'm saying. Like, this is this is highly unusual that a group of people would establish all these fake squatter vacant home accounts all at once to cause this problem at one time. There's something else going on there. Yeah. Oh, a home title lock service. Thank you. That is the name. Mm. Home title lock service. That is a thank you. See, this is what I'm talking about. I have the best subscribers, man. <laughs> thank you so much, Paper Roses. That was thank that you. is what it's called. Title lock services. I am I yeah, I'm actually write it down. <laughs> no, thank you. I, I know this, but you know how like you do something every mm. single day, you start forgetting about the little the little things until something comes up. Yeah. I'm writing that down. Title lock services. Services. Everybody else write that down too. <laughs> Especially if you have vacant properties. Mm. You know, you don't want them to be able to um establish uh because yeah, like technically a squatter could go into that house if they know the other rules about um how the uh deeds are being filed, they could technically reestablish a deed illegally but do it anyways and now now they have ownership of that house so if you did a title lock service 
Oh, that was so good. Thank you, paper. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yep. In the Netherlands, we have an anti-squat rent. Ooh, mm -hmm. I wonder I wonder what that is. Eddie, can you look that up? Eddie, anti-squat rent. I've never me heard either. of that before. Me either. I would like to know about that. Yeah. Cause... Like do they have to like Oh, that's that's super interesting. Now, I will say though that like in the Netherlands and more like Scandinavian countries, they have a a better system for housing the house homeless. Um they have a better system for um the like housing in general. Um, they don't have as much homelessness as they do. We do in here in the United States. They, t they handle it a lot differently and it starts with giving everybody a house. Mm -hmm. um, they have like, a, I, I forget what they call it, but it's, they're, they're nice. I mean, they're nice apartments. Here it is. Uh, anti crack. <laughs> Anti-crack <laughs> The anti crack was established in Netherlands when squatting became illegal. Uh, yeah, so it's oh, that's what it means, anti-squatting. Um, it was established in Netherlands when squatting became illegal. It is intended to place people in buildings that were otherwise be empty for very low rent. Mm -hmm. Under the anti-squatting, your tenant rights are very limited, but you are flexible enough to enough that it is worth giving it a try wow huh. that's interesting huh i don't know if i so, love that <laughs> so they're able to squat at a lower rent but so i guess what they do is they 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 what they they say okay this house is is empty and so now you're gonna you are you have no choice you're gonna have to let these people stay in here but they're gonna have to do it for a cheaper price hmm. i'll have to look into that more yeah, me too. That's interesting. Mm, I don't know if I love that. <laughs> I don't yeah. want anybody forcing me to have to have to rent to somebody that isn't paying full rent, especially if you have to, especially with the cost of of uh, insurance mm -hmm. and and um, the property taxes going up. Property too. taxes alone, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, squirrels! Look. <laughs> He says we're all distracted. <laughs> he, was, he was the one that made the comment earlier. It says, uh, does this affect house insurance if squatters stay or if something else happens to the house? So uh, officially it does affect your homeowner's insurance. Because um, whenever you have a house and it's for rent, you have to let your homeowner's insurance company know that this is a, now a rental property and not a um, owner occupant. Your home insurance does change that way. Um, and so if you have people that have established residence in your house, even though you're not renting to them, you're still going to have to let your insurance company know what's going on. Because as you know, people that are in your house that you have insurance on are not going to take care of your house, especially if they're squatters, both, you know, like, let's be honest, they're not going to take care of that house. Um, very rarely you're going to have something that has stolen and broken into your house that is going to maintain and take care of that house like they should. In some cases, they don't even care if the electricity is on. They're living in that house like it's a campsite. And then yeah. in some cases, they're like lighting little fires in there and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, Or there are other criminal activities that could cause that building to burn down. So you're going to have to let your insurance company know what, exactly what's going on in case something like that does happen. Because then you're withholding information and they can deny any claim that you make because you knew that there were squatters in there. So that was a very good point. Thank you for bringing that up. Then, then you say that, I think uh, an article you sent me was talking about how two squatters went into a property and they end up burning it down. They didn't catch on fire or something. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Cause they, it didn't have electricity. So they just, yeah. they just set up a campsite inside the house. Mm -hmm. you know? Like they were brought the indoors out <laughs> or the outdoors <laughs> in, they brought yeah. the outdoors inside, you know, roasting some marshmallows in the living room carpet. That's, that's not, that's healthy. Yes. Um, question, would a title lock help to keep them out? No, but it would help to keep the, the, there's another problem that's going on with Georgia where people are, um, Clark brought up earlier that people are faking mm -hmm. titles. So they're, they're, uh, refiling the title under their name so they can own it. So what a title lock would do is stop that from happening. They couldn't file a t title title um change mm -hmm. isn't that right <laughs> <laughs> yeah they've been yeah or like i said you can also reach out to your local municipality too so of course through the title lock but also reach out and get that uh, any type of those alerts that they have down here in the, the different counties in georgia 
But, Clark, is there any uh, increase in inventory in Atlanta right now? Uh, so there, it depends on what areas um, and it depends on the price point. Um, mm -hmm. There, We have more properties sitting, of course, on the market that are higher in price. Right. Um, because with the interest rates, everybody's like, I, I'm not paying that right now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, again, it just depends on the area. If it's an area in which people feel sought after as far as the school systems, the location per se, the inventory is very low, honestly. Um, we do have more of uh, different new constructions kind of popping up um, that are offering some good incentives per se. Um, but yeah, our inventory is still low. And I actually had a buyer that was looking in the East Cobb Marietta area. She couldn't find what she wanted. And then she switched to Peachtree City, which is Fayette County, which is mm -hmm. south of the um, airport, like near Fayetteville. Um, and she still didn't see what she wanted either. Like literally in Peachtree, when we were looking, there was only six properties that she um, was in like her budget and she didn't like none of them. So yeah, the inventory is, no one wants to sell the with lower interest rates um, uh, and then the new interest rates, no one wants to budge right now. So the inventory is not really picking up that much. Um, there several months ago when, um, when the interest rates had popped up to eight, there was a bunch of, um, I called them the housing crash bros that said corporate investors are dumping all their, their houses. You know, the housing market is over. And I knew then that that was a bunch of hogwash. So, um, corporate interests, corporate investors, uh, they love when interest rates go up because what happens is that it, it gives them more of an opportunity because they're buying cash, by the way, they're buying cash, they're liquid, and they don't have as much competition when interest rates go up. And everybody knows, and I've said this in previous videos, what drives all housing markets, whether it's the crappiest housing market or the hottest housing market, first time home buyers are what drives markets. It always does. And when you have interest rates in the eights, sevens, there, there isn't as much first-time home buyers that are willing to dip their toe in the lake during that time. They are more interested when they get lower than that. Corporate investors at that time, when the, the rates went up, they bought more homes. They didn't. They were not dumping inventory. That was that was not true. Um, they were buying more. They were buying more. They may have not bought as much as they did in like let's say it, areas of like Austin, Texas, but they certainly were in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And then they've, they've, uh, are finding it in, uh, opportunities in other cities that you don't think about like Miss Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Kansas city, Missouri, those areas. And they buy them in a whole tire pocket. And it's the ones that are the most affordable, the most affordable. And then they try to dictate what's going to happen in that market by owning those specific homes. I think mm -hmm. In Milwaukee, uh, in this one specific area, there was over 8,000 homes that were bought by institutional wow. investors over the last three years. Wow. That's a lot of houses yeah. in one concentrated area. And they own, like, if they own that many houses, they do dictate the market. They can tell, yeah. they can, they could literally pull the plug just like that and make an area tank. So if it tanks, then more people lose their homes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, they know yeah. what they're doing. <clears throat> Yeah, you know I know, I know it was, it's so, like you said, it's so bad in Atlanta that our mayor was trying to, I think it was about like 30 or 40% of like homes that are owned by investors, like corporate investors down here now. So the mayor is trying to do something because sooner or later we won't have enough. We don't have enough inventory now. We won't have any left if they keep buying the single family houses. Traditional media says that corporate investors are not the problem. They they have said that they don't own as many houses as the head as other people say that they do. Uh, they they continue that that discussion, but the thing is is that even if they let's just say let's just say if it was true that only corporate investors owned two percent of the housing market, but that two percent of the housing market that they own is concentrated in small pockets all over. So they are controlling the market in that area. That's not a good thing because if they started there, that means they have an opportunity to go somewhere else and then go somewhere else again. Um, so, all right, Kyle S says question. Could this event be uh, sen sensationalized lead to regulation that allows rental empires to throw people out much more easily than before? I would see that as a long game. Ooh. So 
all right, let's just take that same scenario. So a uh, corporate investors have a bunch of people that have been staying in their house. I don't know if that would work because if, if somebody has a lease, that is protection under a different group of, of laws. Leases protect you in so many different ways. These people have nothing. They have no piece of paper. It's all fake. And that's why they make the fake leases to protect themselves. Um, there's other ways to handle this, not to necessarily make legitimate people that are living in homes uh, get out quicker. But it's an interesting thought. I mean, if yeah. you really want to sit there, that was that's an interesting thought. So. Um, Jeffrey has a question. When can a homeowner do uh, a fight? Uh, what can a homeowner do to fight squatters when it seems that they have no uh, have more rights than the, before the homeowners? Have we had any luck with legislation attempts to further home ownership, uh, further homeowner protections on that? Each state has addressed this. Um, you were talking about what was the bill that in Atlanta right now? Uh, it's called so it's bill it's the house bill 1017 It's called the georgia squatters reform act so we currently have that um it passed the um the congress right i'm hope sure i'm saying it right and now mm -hmm. it's in the it's in the senate so we're hoping yeah. um that it'll pass we've been actually asking homeowners and and people in georgia to to keep calling up and try to see if we can kind of get this motion passed um so it passed the house. Yeah, the house. Yeah, 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 no, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. I, I had to, I had to think on it for a minute too. <laughs> <laughs> so, no worries. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I want to say thank you to our moderators today, with because I know we had uh, almost close to 800 people here in the chat today, and I, I always am appreciative to the uh, moderators who keep the chat. Uh, they keep it civil as much as possible. Uh, I can't look at everything that's on the screen because I'm trying to pay attention to my guests. So I appreciate the moderators for helping everybody out here. Super chat. Super chat. Thank you. <laughs> Jeff Ramos with a $5 Canadian super chat. It says corporate ownership is a relative new phenomenon or has this always been happening? In the 70s, the one day construction house exploded with uh, the government push, pushing it. So, uh, I'll tell you when it happened here in the United States. Corporate ownership spiked uh, astronomically during the Great Recession. And honestly, they didn't even know what they had. They were pretty much forced to buy these houses. They, you know, the banks were like, look, you wrote these crappy mortgages and you got as many people in the houses. Now we got all these houses and we want them off of our books. You're going to buy them. And they're like, oh, okay. And then they were like, well, what do we do with these houses? Well, we could just we'll just fix them up. We'll put lipstick on a pig and we'll fix them up and rent them out. Well, then they, they found out it made them really good money. And they were like, huh, what other ways can we make money? So that's also when they figured out that they could buy manufactured home parks. Right. And they, they really make, they love those. They, anytime that a mom and pop manufactured home park, mobile home park, whatever you want to call it, it goes up for sale. You got to get the highest bids from institutional investors. They love them because they have their cash cows for them. Yeah. They don't have to maintain the properties. Yeah. The, the property can... itself, the house is maintained by the people that own okay, the manufactured right. home. They just renting the, the land. land. The land. Yeah. yeah. So all they have to do is like make sure the front is mowed. Like yeah. they love it. And they just jack those rents up like nobody's business. Everybody, I want to say a special thank you to Clark the Realtor. If you want to find more about Clark the Realtor, you can go to his channel called, guess what? <laughs> Clark the Realtor. <laughs> <laughs> make sure I said your name a lot so people would jump over there and subscribe to your channel. He has over 667 uh, subscribers over there. He does put out content every week. And um, I'd love you guys to go over there and give him a little subscription, especially if you're looking to buy or sell in the Atlanta area. I appreciate you, Clark. And if you need to get a hold of me and you're looking for a real estate agent anywhere in the country other than Atlanta, because you're going to con contact <laughs> Clark the Realtor, you can go over to my website, hit one of those pink buttons, fill out the form and make sure you put your phone number there so I can give you a call personally. Um, it's really simple to do. Just, just go ahead and fill it out. Even even if you just have a, a simple question for me, just go ahead and fill that out. You, even if you don't necessarily need a referral, that's fine. I always get people that reach out to me through that form, which is fine. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. 
Um, if you want to listen to this as a podcast or you want to share it with somebody uh, as they're traveling down the road, just go to Real Estate for Everyone with Christina Smallhorn and you can share this episode. This episode will be airing on Monday if Eddie gets it uploaded on time. That's Eddie's job. <laughs> But next week, I want everybody to know, I want everybody to have a very fantastic uh, Sunday off. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be sharing my Sunday Easter with my family. And um, I'm going to be hanging out with my mom and dad. And we're going to have our leg lamb and do the Easter hunt. And if my, my, hopefully my kids aren't listening, but they are in the, they're, they're way past the Easter basket phase, but you know what, as parents, we still give them Easter baskets. So we're going to be doing that. So I hope everybody has a safe and wonderful holiday again. Thank you so much, Clark, the realtor. And thank you. Thank you. Have a All great right. weekend, you, everybody. You Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Oh, we gotta look. This is our Easter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like under this.